Welcome to part two of learning how to solve algebraic equations. Uh, back in part one, we talked about how to use the distributive property in an equation like the green one you see up here, where you would multiply four times two X and four times negative one, and then also do the same sort of distribution over here as well. And then we also talked about how to use proportions and cross multiplication to solve equations like the blue one here. Well, this part two video is going to explain how to deal with fractions, everybody's favorite I know, but how to deal with fractions that are the coefficients or multipliers of variables. And I'm going to show you a very simple method for how to get rid of those fractions and just go back to nice whole numbers. So with no further ado, let's get it on. First, let's go ahead and take a look at two different methods for how to solve equations that have fractions as your coefficient for a variable. So over here I have 2 fifths times x. Now if you took your calculator right now and took 2 divided by 5, you're going to wind up getting 0 0.4. And that's what we call in the business, that is called a terminating decimal because it ends. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, transform 2 fifths into 0 0.4 because let's be honest, most of you prefer decimals over fractions. And then once you've done that, you can subtract 0 0.4x from both sides, add 13 to both sides. Now you get 24 equals 1.6. You can divide by 1.6 and you get 15. So for most of you, dealing with decimals would be your you know, first choice. You would choose to avoid fractions. So let me show you this other way of doing it. And this method is called fraction busters. And then this will work with, with all fractions. So let's take a look at how this will work in this case here. You'll look at the denominator, AKA the bottom of this fraction here. So I'm gonna write times five. So the reason why I wanna do this is, is if I multiply this two fifths by five, the fives will cross cancel become ones. One times two is two, one times one is one. So this basically becomes just two X. So the fraction has now been busted, it's gone. Now, of course, if we're gonna multiply anything by, in this case, five, we have to multiply everything else by five too. So I'm gonna go and write times five times everything else. So 11 times five is 55. Two X times five is 10 X. And then finally, 13 times five is 65, so it'll be a negative 65. So the beauty of this method is, is that all the fractions, in this case there's only one, but they're gone. And now you're just dealing with nice whole numbers, not even decimals. I'm gonna go ahead now and subtract two X from both sides. So when I do that, I'm gonna wind up with eight X over here, which means on that side of the equation, we're gonna have our variable. So I'm gonna add 65 to both sides. That way all my numbers are gonna be on the other side. And 65 plus 55 is 120. And then if you just grab your calculator, divide by eight, 120 divided by eight is, you guessed it, 15. So this is an, another way of getting the exact same answer. And you'll see now why this might be useful. All right, so why would you want to learn this other method? And the reason is very simple. If you were to take a different fraction, one third, and this one third, if you were to take your calculator out is, 0.3333333 forever and ever and ever. So it, it, it doesn't terminate, it, it's a repeating decimal. So that method here of converting this into a decimal is not gonna really work. So what we're gonna do now is use the fraction buster method. So go ahead now and multiply everything by three. Once again, why do we do that? Because here, if we take three times a third, well, one third of three is just one. So that literally just becomes one X or just X. 3 times 7 is 21, so we get a negative 21. 2x times 3 would be 6x. And then 27 times 3, grab your calculator, and that will end up being 81. So we have a minus 81. All right, so then from here, we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to subtract x on both sides. So that means I'm going to get 5x on this side. That means I now need to remove the negative 81 here, so I'm gonna add 81 to both sides. So here's my add 81. And it turns out if you take 81 and subtract 21, you get 60. And then for our final move here, we're gonna divide both sides by five, and 60 divided by five is 12. So that's what X is. 
If you like what you've seen and heard so far, please like, comment, or subscribe. Thank you, and back to the show. And finally, let's take a look at what would you do if you had multiple fractions here. Uh, by the way, I did write this a little bit differently this time. I literally have uh, two-thirds x, and I wrote it as 2x over 3, and that would be equivalent to one-fourth x, or just x over 4. So this time what we have is we have a 3 on bottom, but we also have a 4 on bottom over here. So if you run into a problem that has multiple fractions here, what you can do is you can say to yourself, hmm, if I were to take the lowest common denominator of 3 and 4, in other words, what's the first thing that 3 and 4 are going to be into? That answer would be 12. All right, 3 goes into 12 evenly, so does 4, and it's the lowest one possible. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything by 12. All right, so I'm putting out my times 12 here. All righty, so let's take a look at the first one here. Uh, if we have 12 over 1, that's going to reduce to be 4 over 1. 4 times 2x is 8x over 1, so that's just going to be 8x. 6 times 12 is 72, so we have a negative 72. Over here, if we were to do this here, I'm going to put the 12 here instead so you can see a little more clearly. These are going to cancel out, and that's going to become 3x over 1. So that's going to equal 3x, and then we have 4 times 2 is 8. All righty. This time, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3x on both sides. Now we get a 5x right here, which means we now need to remove the negative 72 from that side of the equation. So let's go ahead and add that to both sides. 72 plus 8 is 80. And then grab your calculator, divide by 5, and if you divide by 5, 80 divided by 5 is 16. So x ends up being 16 here. All right, so that's it. You now know how to deal with fractions and equations using the method called fraction busters. Thanks for watching the video. Hope to see you again soon.